Hello and welcome. So this is uh, Differentials 101, and I'm going to try to be concise uh, yet detailed at the same time, so we'll see how this works out. But uh, the most common RCs uh, that people are going to buy for either racing or bashing hobby grade RCs are going to have some combination of differentials. So you may have just a rear differential. If your vehicle is only rear wheel drive, then you probably only have a rear differential. Uh, now, assuming this is four wheel drive, uh, there is a possibility you only have a rear differential and the next picture will be a better one. Uh, you could have two differentials, just uh, front and rear, or you could have three, front, a center, and a rear differential. Now, each one has its own purpose and use. Uh, sometimes you can have spools. So there, uh, for example, my Yokomo BD-10, right, as of this video, uh, has a spool in the front and there's no center differential. Uh, sometimes you will hear people refer to the transmission, uh, but there's no differential here. Uh, then something else, for example, my Revo 3.3, that one has a front differential, rear differential. It does not have a center differential. Uh, it has a slipper clutch, but it's, it's not the same. And something such as my Techno SCT 410.3 has three differentials. It has a front, a center, and a rear. And this is very common on four-wheel drive vehicles that are used for uh, certain race applications. Uh, so for example, buggies, uh, four-wheel drive buggies, 10 scale, tend to have three differentials, right? An EB 410.2 would be one example of that. Uh, short course, just like I mentioned, that's an example. If you have a slash four-wheel drive, you, you have an option for the center. You can either do a center oiled field differential or you could do a slipper clutch at which point you would not have a differential uh, in the center. You would just have a front and a rear. So you have these two options with the slash uh, four by four. Now the purpose of a differential is to compensate for the difference in speed of each one of the tires. So as the vehicle turns, each tire is going to follow a path. Now these paths are all different depending on which tire it is. So if we assume this is the vehicle here, front, center, rear, if we turn to the right, the outer left tire is going to have the longest paths. path. Uh, that's the reason why if any of you have ever watched the movie Ben-Hur, uh, one of the things that Ben-Hur says uh, during the chariot races is uh, there's a chariot being pulled by four horses. The horse on the outside is the slower horse, and it's having a difficult time catching up, so he suggests to switch that horse to the inside, and it works. Right? That horse can now catch up because it's a slower horse. So it's the same thing here. As you take a turn, this tire in order to complete the turn at the same time as this tire over here, it must travel a longer distance. Therefore, it must travel faster than this tire. So these differentials compensate for that difference in speed. And that's the reason why you generally have a rear, usually a rear. Sometimes you have a front, and then uh, you can also have a center. Now, each one of the differentials actually serves their main purpose is different. So it serves a slightly different main purpose. The front differential is going to be heavily responsible for steering. It is going to affect traction, but mainly steering. The center differential is going to affect mainly the front and rear power balance or power transfer. The rear differential is going to greatly affect traction as well as steering. It will affect steering, but traction is a big component and that is the purpose behind them. Now you have to select uh, the types of oils or if you're going to run uh, spools for example. If we move on to the front differential, uh, say you go with thin oil. Well thin oil in the front is going to do the following. 
the first thing to understand is this. Uh, as the vehicle turns, there's a weight transfer. So imagine this is the vector, this is the force vector. So this is going to more than likely lift, or it could be the front here. Uh, I'm assuming the front is lifting. The tire that's going to lift, the rear could also lift, but this, uh, we would have to start talking about sway bars, droop, etc. So for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Uh, say you're taking the turn, all right? If you have thin oil, thin oil is going to give you better steering while entering off power. So if you're just, say, coasting and you're entering, right? All of the tires are going to be in contact with the pavement. They will all have traction. So because these two front tires both have traction and you have thin oil and you're going slow, well, because you're going slow and you have thin oil, uh, these are going to follow their path and the differential is going to compensate for the difference in speed between the two. So you're going to have more steering off power. So as soon as you're coasting, let's just say you just coast into a corner. The problem is uh, you will have less, less traction when you exit a corner and you try to accelerate. And the reason why is because as you try to accelerate, this force vector is going to lift this part of the vehicle. It may lift this tire. Again, it all depends on the sway bars and droop that you have. So let's assume this is the only tire that lifts and to be honest, it would not matter if both of these lift. So the front lifts. What's going to happen is this tire here is going to unload. And the reason why is because there's no resistance here in the differential. So all of the power is going to go to the tire with the least resistance, meaning the one with less traction. The tire with the least amount of traction usually will be the inner tire. And that's because the wheel will lift and it will cause the tire to no longer be in contact with the traction surface. It doesn't matter if it's pavement, carpet, etc. this tire will lift. When that happens, it will unload, so this one will spin faster, this tire will slow down. So it's going to affect coming out of the turn, and it will actually perform worse coming out of a turn when you try to go on power. Uh, you're not going to have very good traction. Uh, for this reason, you generally want thicker oil uh, in the front differential compared to the rear, let's say. And many vehicles come with spools, and some people switch over to spools or a thicker oil, which is generally my choice, depending on the differential that I have. Now, if you go with front thick oil or a spool, here, uh, you're going to notice a difference in steering because both of them are now going to be spinning together. Let's just say you have a spool, or really thick oil, uh, but say you have a spool, both of these will be rotating at the same revolutions per minute, which means that they're going to follow a similar trajectory or a similar circle that the radius of the circle will be the same so one of the things that you will notice is this one's going to want to follow this path the outer tire will want to follow this path well if you look at the circles they converge so what you're going to end up having is both of these tires are going to be fighting each other and at entering a corner at high speed is going to cause you a lot of problems this can cause you to oversteer or understeer, uh, it, it really depends on the speed. But if you enter a corner too fast, uh, you're going to oversteer. And then as soon as you slow down, if you slow down fast, you're going to oversteer and just lose the car. So you're going to wipe out. Uh, and that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you do have a spool or really thick oil, the strategy when taking a turn is to actually slow down, or not necessarily slow down, well, I guess you would slow down, you let off the throttle as you enter. So as you enter, the car is going to want to understeer. And then what you do is you just power out of the corner. So let's just say this were a straight line, you're going straight, right? You release the throttle, 
and then you start entering and then you start accelerating accelerating maybe by about mid turn you're at full power again and that will keep you on track and the reason why it will keep you on track is for the following reason as the weight transfers to the outside the front tire is going to start coming off the traction surface which means this one will now have less traction which will allow this one to scrub uh, and this one will have all of the traction but because it's a closed differential or a spool or really thick oil this one will still have power so this tire is going to be able to pull the car which is the opposite effect of uh, the other example with thin oil. Thin oil, this one will not be able to pull the car. With thick oil or a spool, this tire at high speed will be able to pull the car. So thick oil or a spool is actually a great choice to enter slow and power out of the entire corner for that reason. Uh, this is also beneficial for, say, carpet or really high traction surfaces, also referred to as high bite. And the reason why is, let's just say you had an open differential here, thin oil. The weight's going to transfer, this tire unloads, this tire slows down. So as far as this tire, as far as your car is concerned, by this tire slowing down, it would be the same thing as this braking, you're going to traction roll. So the car's just going to boop, flip over and roll. By having a spool here in the front or thicker oil, what's going to happen is as this wants to lift, this tire is going to keep pulling the car, which is going to try to lower this part over here. Something that you will notice is if you go fast enough, both of these will actually come off uh, the ground usually. But at that point, it's pretty easy to control because you're still steering on a circle. You're just driving on your outer two, two tires. Uh, which you shouldn't. Ideally, you want all four of them in contact. But that's one of the differences between having a spool or really thick oil versus thin oil. So the thicker oil is going to give you better traction for that reason, because even though this one lifts, it's not going to allow it, if it's a spool, it will not allow this to unload because it has to rotate at the same speed, even though this one has no traction. It could be in midair. It doesn't matter. Uh, so you're going to have more steering exiting the corner for that reason because you can power out of the corner and carry that speed out of the corner so you enter again slow and then power out so you'll have more uh, steering exit in the corner uh, and you will experience less traction roll on high traction surfaces for that reason because the front end is going to be pulling the car not giving the rear time to lift over and flip over this front tire so that's an advantage. So to summarize, front oil differential. If you go with thinner, you'll generally get better steering entering at speed off power. So if you're just coasting in really fast, uh, but you will get less traction on the exit because the inside wheel will unload. So this is a real bummer. So on the front, you generally want thicker oil. Uh, and these are the reasons why. So you may, uh, now the downside is you may uh, oversteer entering at speed. So you want to just coast and then start accelerating. You want to drop enough speed so you can accelerate out. Uh, you may understeer at low speeds. It's not noticeable many times on RCs. It's more noticeable on bigger cars. And the reason why is if you're going really slow, those two tires are fighting each other. So your turning radius just gets bigger. That's really the only reason why. When you're going at speed, the outer tire is the one that's really driving. So that's why you get better steering when you're accelerating. You're going to get better traction to steering on corner on acceleration, more steering exit in the corner, and less traction roll on high traction surfaces. So there's a lot of advantages to having thicker oil. Now that's going to depend on a vehicle. For example, light touring car vehicles, such as you know, Yokomo BD10, for example, you really want a spool in the front and they already come with one. If you have a vehicle, uh, let's just say you have a four wheel drive buggy, 10 scale, or you have a short course, 10 scale, four wheel drive, you also want thicker oil in the front if you're going to be doing, for example, carpet racing, etc. or else you, you will be traction rolling like no tomorrow. So you definitely need thicker oil. How thick of an oil? That's up to you. 
If you go below 50, I think that's too light. Uh, and by 50, I mean 50,000. Uh, you could go 30, 30 still too light because it's too big of a vehicle. It's too heavy. You need uh, more resistance. If you want it to go with uh, 1 million, 1 million actually works pretty good. Uh, that's very, very thick oil though. So that's something that you want to consider. Uh, unfortunately, most of us don't like to take apart differentials uh, after you know every five minutes, but you really want to run your vehicle, see what it's doing, and then decide if you want to go thicker or thinner. Uh, I do have vehicles with 1 million in the front, and I have some RCs with 50,000. It depends on the application. Uh, I hope this is useful. Uh, please uh, make sure to comment. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,